that resulted in, and what we found was there was a lot of parallels between the plans. But this is why we have five different plans we're reviewing now. And there's the last plan. Anything additional that we want to talk about at this point? And just to my memory, is there one that, that is recommended? Or I don't think there's one of the five that's recommended at this point. Mr. President, board members, superintendent, audience members, consultants. I'm Ed Robinson from Mellington, Maryland. And of course, you know I'm here to fight for my town and my school. I didn't hear anything from the consultant mentioning Mellington at all as any possibility except closure. Uh, were you directed that way, or is it coming up something? Can I have some hours? Can I have some later? Sorry, can you repeat that? My question was: Were you instructed to have Mellington as one of the two, or did you come up with that? Well, we went through a, a process, um, starting with the uh, presentation in October, to uh, explain the reason for the school consolidation. And uh, then we went into a focus group session on the 20th, where we uh, established a uh, selection criteria um, and boundary parameters. Uh, and and with the object of that was, was to be able to um, um, get the main categories of concern and apply them to a, a plan that makes sense for, for everyone. And, and and the staff members, which is the Superintendent's Technical Advisory Committee, met um, three occasions on November 2nd, November 17th, and December 7th um, to discuss those uh, parameters and selection criteria to come up with the development of the five plans that we have now um, that we're showing uh, as possibilities. Okay. I differ with your uh, opinion. I agree with uh, fourth grade teacher from Mel Mellington, Susan Dorsey, and her statement before the board before with the school accomplishments to date in history, and most recently in the most recent new numbers of the latest state test, where in a newspaper article of Kent News, uh, Mellington topped the rankings in third graders at a 35.3 on fours and 45.3 percent of fifth graders was two tenths different from Morton. And you're in the same article, a different article, on, on the consolidation. Uh, you picked two schools to close that are two most efficient schools in Kent County. And you state that uh, less money is owed on them. But that's because they're so efficient that hardly money, no money has been spent on them. Been a lot of money spent on older schools. And you say that uh, they both have a high uh, figure to maintain them because you're putting in capital figures that haven't been done for the future. They've already been done at the other schools. So take that in mind. And board, once you close the school, it's closed. Think about this long and hard. This is one of your best schools that you have, and you're getting ready to close it. And not only, not only that, it really tears up a community. Millington's real estate will plummet lowly. We will lose probably our banks, we'll probably lose our businesses. You know what we need to do is take courage from what the new governor said. He was willing to put $300,000 in the supplemental budget. We need to go over there. We've been there before, but we need to go over there and tell the legislators it's not just the big seven counties that rule in Maryland. They need to have an education for rural students the same as they do metropolitan students. Let's put some extra dollars in Kent County, the smallest county, to help supplement that. And in the meantime, that we, the county commissioners, the Board of Education, the citizens of Kent County will work hard to try to get industry, light good industry in this county to bring in families and get our numbers up. And in the meantime, supplement us with uh, needing money and not, since they don't want to change the form or whatever, they can add to the form by giving us some additional funds if they want to. Apparently they don't. We have a neighbor county, Queen Anne's. Millington is larger than Sutterville. They're building a brand new and have a brand new middle school there. 
they're one of the big seven. Okay? So I think it's encouraging that government willing to go a step. We need to help him and go over there and twist the arms of our legislator. I know they're all going to be representing their own areas, but the senators aren't supposed to. They're supposed to be looking out for the welfare of every citizen and every child. And that's the biggest expense that they're supposed to handle is education. And they've been lowering the figure each year, uh, not only here, but statewide. And that is supposed to be their major obligation. So I implore you to look at the, we have one of the best staff and one of the best principals you can ever find in Huntington. And they've done an exceptional job, and so did their predecessor. And it speaks of what uh, your teacher, Sue Dorsey, said at your last meeting. And I'm pleased tonight to take all those complaints into consideration and also the harm that it will do our community. Thank you. So well, my name is Rosie Elgin, and I am the owner and the director of Miss Ann's Daycare. Um, we are a family-owned business. We've been there for 50 years, same location. We provide service to the community, and we have buses that come right now from Wharton Elementary School and from Garnett Elementary School. Um, I understand that the consolidation is only a proposal at this time, but I do have a few concerns, uh, one of them being the boundaries the consistency for the children, and the, the um, fact that parents need daycare. Um, right now, the boundary lines for our Wharton children and um, Garnett are Nicholson Road and Annie Crow Road. So if a child lives on Nicholson and or Annie Crow Road, they have a choice of going to Wharton Elementary School or going to Garnett Elementary School. Uh, we are directly across from Nicholson Road. From what I see from your diagrams on the computer and things, it looks like your boundaries for Garnett, the new boundaries, would be uh, Broadneck Road. We are approximately three quarters of a mile to a mile from Broadneck Road. We are three and a half miles from Garnett Elementary School, and we're about 17 miles from Rock Hall. It looks to me like with the new consolidation, um, we would be district with Rock Hall, which is okay. But what I'm having a little trouble with is the fact that these children that are currently coming to us that are Wharton children, when you consolidate, some of those children are going to be going to Wharton, I mean to Rock Hall Elementary, some will be going to Garnett Elementary. I'd like for them to have the same consistency of having the option to come to our daycare before and after school for transportation, which means that boundary line would need to be moved about a mile on Route 20 to Baker's Lane. Um, which would accommodate parents on both ends. You know, your Rock Hall and Warden parents that go that direction, and also the ones who will be at Barnett. Um, we have 57 uh, children in attendance every day at our center, and we are the only daycare center in Chestertown. There are no other centers in Chestertown. Um, we provide service to 70 families in the community at this time, and our service for our before and after, we do before and after care for children. We um, take them on early dismissal, as today was an early dismissal, they came to us. And we also have, when there's delayed openings due to weather with fog delays, we are open and we put them on the bus in the mornings. Uh, of course, with the consolidation, parents still have to work. They have the same jobs, they have the same hours. This doesn't affect anything for the parent except make an issue if they don't have daycare so that they can get to their job on time. We're, um, we're located pretty central for both schools to still be able to use us for before and after school care and for days off and early late openings. Um, quality daycare is hard to find, especially in this small community. Um, and it would be a lot less change for the children involved with this consolidation if that was one thing that didn't change in their routine, if they still had the same place. A lot of these children have been with us since they were two years old. And they just, you know, once they get to school age, they continue and it gives their parents a place to take them before and after as well. In conclusion, I'm just asking the board to please consider leaving the Garnett boundaries as um, for us to be included as far as the Garnett boundaries are. Um, and if the Rock Hall boundary comes up that far, I'm fine with that too, because that really would help a lot of our Wharton parents that are already having to take their children possibly to Rock Hall. 
Uh, so it just makes things easier for them. It's hard to find before and after school care, as well as daycare on early dismissal days and delayed openings. And the parents in this community still need to work, and we have been able to provide these services to them for 50 years. And we would like to continue doing that and having the buses from both schools be able to use us. Um, if you have any other questions, you know, you're welcome to contact me anytime. And, you know, I just hope that you move those boundaries so that we can accommodate the parents we need to. Thank you. Board member, my name is Alan Schauber. I'm a product of the Tank County Public Schools. There's three of you on the panel. Um, I echo Mr. Robinson with the uh, Warden and Millington closures. Everything he said is 100% right. Um, your uh, lost my train of thought. Dr. Couch, I have talked to many of your staff administrators. All of them tell me to take my granddaughter and run. Now, if there's a problem with your administrators telling me that, then there's a bigger problem than closing two schools. Also, to the group over here, it takes my granddaughter 45 minutes now to get to my residence when she comes home from school. What will this do to that time frame? Uh, we have to look at our kids. I also see our uh, county commissioners here. I think everyone in this room would echo, we will pay more taxes to keep our schools open. Is that correct? That's all I have. Thank you. And, um, I was just at a meeting tonight where the comment was made that the perceptions of Kent County public schools is actually closer. Okay. The perceptions of Kent County Public Schools are actually lagging behind the actual improvements and progress that the school system has made. Um, there have been a lot of progress made, um, and unfortunately, because of declining enrollments, we're faced with this tough, tough decision. Um, I've listened, I've been, attended as many meetings as I could to listen to what the concerns of the parents and um, the community have to say. Um, the top concerns that I heard were class size, and, and I know you guys have heard this, but I just want to reiterate it again, um, and the uh, bus commute time. And the last thing that I've heard over and over again is eighth graders um, being integrated with the high school as well. Um, I know this is a tough decision, but as a community, um, whatever the decision is, we need to come together and support the public school system as well as the Board of Education um, to move the county forward. We're not going to do that by tearing each other apart. We're only going to do that by supporting one another. So, thank you. Good evening, board, and good evening, sir. So, to some of the audience. Um, I want to make a, a few comments in regards to this whole process. It appears, I'm not saying that it may be so, but it appears that this decision has been made based on two particular communities that would be least likely to oppose the decision. Um, they, it appears that rumors were floated around as to, as to which schools were going to be closed, and the decision seems to have come down based on which communities were the least likely to oppose it. I agree with Mr. Ross and Mr. Shaw that we both feel as if this is going to be detrimental to, detrimental to the community. That are going to be affected by this. I have a, one question in, in regards to the decision. Um, has there been any consideration in, in the plan um, that, that, are, that will affect student achievement? Student achievement is school climate when you're making this decision about what you're going to send particular kids. And I'm going to ask that of the board. Have, have you thought about that? We have schools that have high achievement, and now you're talking about splitting them up. And send them to other places that may not necessarily have the same types of student achievement and positive school climate. Has there been any thought about that? Can we make them talk about the district and plan? And also to the consultants, is, you seem to have given us a, a program, a computer program, where it's based on just putting in some numbers and they spit out some results. Is there anything in that program that speaks about the specific characteristics of a community or a neighborhood and 
the same could be tweaked to, be, to develop a positive plan that meets the needs of a particular community. And those are just questions you can answer them. But I would actually would like to hear an answer to these questions. Community, or not, not necessarily community, but the computer program that you use. We can put in numbers and it will give us five different models. But are any of those models specific to, to Kent County? Or is this a plan that, that you are you know, presenting to the board? It is what we've done based on the information that you've given us. Without any consideration as to how it may be tweaked or, or, or fixed in a way that, that is going make, to make, make things a lot better, other than just dropping us a cookie cutter plan. Basically, we had certain uh, parameters, parameters that we created to develop the boundary maps and uh, criteria for uh, choosing the schools. And, and basically, we have five elementary schools in the county. And we're trying to reduce two schools from that five. So we really look at categories, location, Floor plan size. We looked at demographics and community integrity, which which you're talking about, which we want to preserve as best we can. And uh, maintenance is a big issue because um, once we take out buildings and we keep buildings, then we have to figure out how we're going to improve those buildings, which is a capital expense that. Um, when you put the capital expenses with the operational expenses, you come up with a, a very understanding of what makes sense on paper. Now, what you're saying is it's a, it's a delicate balance, and the program doesn't make those decisions. All we do is try to narrow things down as best we can and balance the enrollment, balance community integrity and diversity and transportation, which is the most important thing. So we're trying to balance all those elements. And it's not a perfect, it's not gonna be a perfect solution at the end. It's, it's gonna be a balance, and there's gonna to have to be a consensus of the entire community to say that's the best we can do, and you know, we ratify that and we approve that. It's not gonna be that it's gonna be favoring one community or another, you can't. So, that's, I don't know if that answers your question. Well, but in, in a little bit, but I'm not particularly speaking of, of favoring a particular community, but more of the whole district. Is there a way that the, that the program is able to be manipulated to make it less an impact, even though there is going to be some negative impact in the communities that are served? Is there a way to lessen that impact by you going in and, and actually looking at the specific characteristics of the neighborhood and trying to maintain that neighborhood's integrity. That's, that's the question I'm asking. I don't, I don't think from the presentation that you've given us tonight that that seems to come across. I understand the process that's used. I'm just a cartographer. You know, I draw the, I draw the map boundaries based on the input of the members of the superintendent's uh, technical advisor committee. <coughs> Those are members of, of your community. And so when we sit and we have discussions about drawing lines back and forth, it's not just, that's not a line, that's a community. And they talk about those communities. And so, you know, I've been learning a lot about kind of geography, so it's not, the program is just a way, it's just a chalkboard. It's just a way for us to draw, have a set of, uh, a set of boundaries to begin with. And those blocks, the, the census blocks that we're using are the smallest, Geographic unit that we have available to us at this point. So, and, and many of the and many of the blocks are empty. There's no students in, them, which is one of our problems because the student population is so spread out. But we get down to that small level and we start moving roads around there. And, you know, it's it's not a road to the members of the, the technical advisor committee. That's a community to them, and they let us know that before we move that border around. Is that is that accurate? I would say from the work that we did. All right. Um, I think going forward that you may want to take a second look at it, how you present this material to individuals. Because I, I don't know about you, but I'm sure that many of you may not were fully, fully got the gist of what they were. 
Um, so, board, is it possible that you could answer the question about school climate and, and uh, student achievement and, and the development of the plan, or have I talked too much already? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the limit was only five minutes. Is there something you can yeah. speak to that? I'll, I'll say that I know we're going to have some discussion up here in a little bit, but I, I will say from my perspective, I'm taking everything in that I'm hearing tonight from the audience. Uh, I have not made a decision on anything yet, and nor will I until I hear what everyone out here has to say. There'll be people out there say, oh, he has already made his decision, but that's your perception. That's not true, okay? So I'm taking everything you're saying, I'm taking what everyone else has said, I've actually jotted myself some notes here on the computer, I'm not playing a game on the computer, I'm jotting notes down here, what you're saying. It's important to me. This happened several years ago, and in my opinion, it wasn't done right. I've watched this very closely, this process so far. I've looked at these maps. I have some of the same concerns you have. There's some questions I have. Um, you know, so these are questions that I'm going to ask a little bit too. I know Mr. Williams has some questions. This is a serious decision, and I think all everybody sitting here on the board, it, it, it's we're we're going to look at every little piece. I wasn't happy with the boundary lines from the last consolidation. I thought it was a major mess. My personal opinion, others may disagree, but my personal opinion, that was a mess. The whole process of the last consolidation to me was a total mess, in my opinion. So I am very, very, I'm watching this really closely, and I'm listening intently, because it is important what you have to say. So that's that's where I stand. I don't know if that helps you with well, it, what it, you're it trying does. to do. At least this is something else you can put on the table to think about. Yes, sir. And how is this going to affect test students? Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Joe Carlick. I'm a local business owner and have three children in two county schools. Um, first off, the way that we presented this, I haven't gone over the web very much, but how we did it tonight, it's super sad. So uh, if I can help you guys from a design standpoint with what I do for corporate companies all over the country and try to help this situation, I'll jump in and just come out for a day and we can talk about how we can make it so that everybody can understand what's happening, where things are, the difference between maps, and we can present this again maybe so that everybody can kind of really get it instead of just flopping through different maps. One of my main concerns is is the distance that our kids spend on the bus because of the you know the way that our county is set up. You know, we live maybe two and a half at the most five minutes from school and it takes our kids an hour and a half to get home. And I can only see when that blue space gets even wider and uh, and and I'm interested to to hear have we are we shifting funds and money to busing? And what is the longest distance that we figured out that a student is allowed to, or is there a regulation on how long a student can sit on the bus? Uh, is there a regulation on which kids can be on the bus with which other kids? Um, because it's our most unsupervised time of the day that we give our children to you guys. And, and to me, um, this, the horror stories that I've heard um, would only be, you know, made worse by stretching this out. I know that it's something that probably has to happen, but maybe there's ways that we can work to better supervise those. Uh, volunteer being on the bus so that the driver that has to keep them on the road and safe isn't also being a disciplinarian and trying to maintain the chaos that happens sometimes on the bus. Um, and that, you know, is a concern when we, we're we moving the age group up with junior high and we're moving the age group up for high school, which I think is a, you know, as everyone said, it's a, one of our largest concerns. Uh, and it's because it's the unsupervised time. Uh, I think everyone agrees that they do a really good job when they're in school. Um, and it's not to the fault of anyone, but it's just the, the so is there a, is there a time uh, limit for busing? Is there a distance time? Is there a combination of children? Any of that that's somewhere is a regulation? Um, there is, there actually is no mandated time, time limit. But one of the things that we heard from the focus group was to look at limiting bus routes or at least bus, bus rides 
to an hour, you know, in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. So that is something that we're really focused on, and if we can do better than that, um, that would be wonderful. Uh, one of the things that we I talked about several times at uh, board meetings when we talked about consolidation is that um, in talking with uh, consultants that write the that wrote the software in which we route the buses, they indicated that, um, and it was brought up at the focus group, that if we look back at going to community stops where it makes sense, um, where you have densely populated uh, subdivisions or, or those types of things, then the goal would be to um, pick up a large number of kids um, quickly, fill up the bus, and then route it directly to the school mm -hmm. so that you're not stopping at every other home and then it adds to the to the trip on the on the bus. So one of the things that um, I talked to the, the board about and I think that everybody is is on is is feeling good about that is when, once we make the decision about what it is we are going to do with consolidation, then if we spend some money and have somebody advise us with, um, it, it, like Mr. Uh, President Reid said, making sure that we spend money so that we are looking at all of the aspects for busing and making sure that we are doing the most direct route. And if it means we identify certain areas where we can, we can uh, better the time that the kids are getting from their homes to the school, then that is better for everybody concerned. And I think that what has happened over time is many years ago, we did have community stops, is, is what a lot of the members of the focus group said. And over the years, we've moved into pretty much door-to-door -door service. And that adds time on the bus. So we're gonna look at every which way um, that we can in order to uh, better uh, times on the bus so that you know we, we heard that loud and clear as the two major concerns for the families were class size, which we intend to identify and make sure that we're, we're going to maintain um, suitable class sizes so that, you know, we're not, I mean, there's a lot of rumors that we're gonna have 30 kids for class. That's, that's not our intent, and that's not what we, in, we intend to do. So, you know, all of those things are our major priorities for us. So, um, but, but we can't finalize those things until we make a determination on you know, what the boundaries are gonna be and then we can start identifying how we can um, route the buses and, and try to, to be more efficient in that, in that way. All right, well, uh, uh, please take me up on, yeah. on, on coming in and helping on the presentation because I think that would just calm fears as well if they can understand it in a manageable way. So. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Judy O'Brien. I'm a Chestertown resident, and my husband and I have a third grader at Garnett and a seventh grader at the middle school. Our primary concern with the consolidation plan is the proposal to move the eighth grade here to the high school. I understand that the board has to consider demographic factors, the board has to consider budgetary factors, but as parents, our primary concern are developmental factors and educational factors. So I would be very interested to hear more of an explanation for the moving of the eighth grade to the high school. Uh, are there uh, other school districts that have implemented this sort of combination, consolidation of eighth grade along with high schoolers? Mr. Carly, I would echo Mr. Carlick's concern of my eighth grader being on a bus with high school seniors from Chestertown to Wharton, and I don't know what the bus route would be and how much time she would have to spend on that bus. But the age difference, the age disparity there, uh, developmentally, it is quite dramatic. And I would be very interested to hear what factors, uh, in terms of development and education, the board is considering uh, when, when proposing, or the, the, the committee is pro uh, when proposing to move the eighth grade here. There are many programs at the middle school, and we're thrilled to death with the band program at the middle school. Uh, and our eighth grader would lose her opportunity to be at, at the top of the uh, food chain at the uh, middle school there for her eighth grade year in a very strong band program with Mr. Fryson and she would come to a high school where she would be developmentally and in terms of her musical ability much lower would she have access to the band programs as eighth graders what are they going to miss out on by not being able to compete with slots 
with the high schoolers who are more prepared. Uh, and I'm, please direct me to information on the website if it's available, but I didn't find much discussion of the reasoning behind moving the eighth graders. If it's purely a budgetary concern, if it's a demographic concern, I, the, the, I, is there not enough space for the middle school if you bring the fifth graders in? Are you then out of space to accommodate the eighth graders? Uh, do they have to be relocated? Or would keeping them in place at Kent County Middle School be an option in the consolidation program? And I would love to hear some discussion of that. Um, well, first I wanted to say um, that emotionally I'm, I'm pretty sad to hear about Warren closing. Um, that's where I went to school uh, growing up. But having said that, what's most important to me is that when my girls get to school that they get the quality education. So whatever decisions that have to be made to make that happen, I fully support. I mean, the emotional part makes me sad, but like we all have a right to have a quality education. And I think for me, I'm obviously everyone else, that's what we care most about. Um, but at the same time, we, my kid will go into pre-K this in 2016. And one of the maps sends me to Rock Hall. So as a uh, Wharton resident, I want to voice my opinion that I, I don't want that. Um, I prefer Garnett or um, Chestertown. Rock Hall from my house to the school is about 35 minutes, which is, is a lot. And even if you eliminate, eliminate most all of the bus stops, I just, I don't know. I think, that's, I think that's too much for me. And it is, I'm speaking for my sister and a couple of other residents in my neighborhood. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jennifer Hinton. Um, I have a son in the middle school and two in Galena. And my primary concern is also moving the um, eighth graders to the high school. I feel very strongly that that is a bad decision. Um, developmentally, they're just not ready. They need that chance to grow up, to learn who they are before they're grown children who are legal adults. Um, the unsupervised times, of course, would be the worst. Um, and even those group bus stops you're talking about, they don't have their parents there with them anymore. But my son's only going to be 12 years old. I don't want him left alone with a bunch of 17-year-olds. And um, also, I did want to hear more about, um, I've heard conflicting answers about the degree that they'll be mixed with the high school students. I've heard on the one hand that they'll be kept very separate. And on the other hand, about all the opportunities they're going to have with the labs and and the, um, you know all the things at the high school. So, are they going to be separate? Are they going to be mixed? That's that's my question. If you have to move them, but I agree um, with the earlier speaker that please, if you can, don't move them. Thank you. My name's Barb Reed, and I live in Chesapeake Landing. I don't know if everybody knows about that subdivision. It's kind of similar to Chester Harbor in Queen Anne's County. A lot of single family homes and affordable for working class people. So when I put in my address, I was surprised all five choices are not home, which I've been character counts coach, my husband's been a character counts coach at Warden, um, BPTA vice president. Um, most of the parents I've been involved with, we've elected to pull our kids out, but I'm still coming, I'm still listening because it's expensive to pay for private school and the bus to get my kids up to Elkton. I'd love to come back, but just like the thing, if I had to pick my kid up from school to take him to the dentist, that's I might as well take a half day off of work. So I hope that some of the employers and fix it out and if you work at the college and you're a parent, I'm glad I dealt with so I thought about the same daycare and working parents. But as a county, I hope you guys are thinking about what parents have to do to get their kids to well child visits. There's not many doctors in Rock Hall. So, and I wonder what the parent endowment is. Because my kids can ride their bus from Chesapeake Landing to the community pool here, for example. Not ride the bus, ride their bikes, I meant to say. We're about five miles. We're Rock Hall is only 12. So just, if we could look at that particular development, I was surprised. Are there many other developments between here and Rock Hall? I don't think so. It's usually farmland, but that's quite a few houses that can be rented out. Or it's not just seniors, like we're hearing about most of Kent County is settled by seniors. But I'm appreciative that some of my retirees helped me get my kids off the bus safely and put them on the bus safely. So it takes a village. Thank you for considering that particular subdivision. It could be factored into 
you work in Chestertown, could you pick your kid up from the local school and get them to a well child visit, for example? Good evening, folks. I'm Gary Fellow. Uh, I am a uh, concerned grandparent. Unfortunately, we don't want to be redundant to history. I don't want to do what Eddie did, but I agree with him 9,000%. Fortunately, I had the pleasure of watching all of you grow up through the school system and uh, become parents and soon be grandparents. <clears throat> but I have a couple questions, and uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm very disappointed that our consultant came right out of the gate and said these are the two schools that need to be closed. It's all said and done because the county could perception is that's the way it is, that's the way it's written, and that's the way it's going to be. And I don't think we played that way, sir. Um, and I appreciate your opinion, and that's what you get paid for. But these folks get elected to represent the opinions of the people in this county, and I'm hoping that they hear what most folks say. Um, I'm not sure that through your process, Mr. Superintendent, that all the options have been considered. Uh, and, and if they happen, I'm kind of late coming into this, and, uh, and, and I really need to get up to speed with the identity and uh, the information, the time schedule. Why all of a sudden we started talking about this in October, maybe? When, when, when did all this program become adamant that we're going to start in October and it's going to be finished by the end of next month? Am I close? So we're going to close two schools in the county, change the whole busing system, um, and every option that you've got is only the options that you've given five drafts of what he said this is the way it's going to be. There are no other options that the general public can look at or talk about or discuss or talk to these folks to say, uh, time out. Again, time out. And let's make sure, whoever the person said a little while ago, that we really make a good, sound decision. Because, sir, you did see a while back there was some serious shortcomings in the decisions that were made prior to this. And to uh, make the decisions you're about to encounter are absolutely huge. Our community, as Ed said, would be absolutely devastated if you close our school. Uh, they, people would have no reason whatsoever to look at there other than the marvelous food line that we have there that most of Kent County now supports and we're very happy for that. So thank you very much. Continue shopping in our fine little community. Um, but but my, what predicated the need to say this all needs to be a done deal by the end of January, first part of March? I mean, did somebody throw a gauntlet down and say, it's here, it's got to be done. We need to make a decision so we can move forward. Did it mandate by the state? Was it mandated by Karen? Was it mandated by the gentleman that got paid for his opinion? Because truly that's all it is, is an opinion. He has a title and he has a company that gives opinions. Well, there's thousands of them out there. A gentleman just offered you free service for his opinion on how to draw a break. So you paid for his opinion. Do we have to agree with it? No, it's truly an opinion. I also counter on a truly, the gentleman, where's the gentleman that just spoke a few minutes ago? What in the world does, whether they're African American, Caucasian, Hispanic, what has that got to do with whether we close the school or not? Is that mandated in the state policy on how we make a decision? and what the percentages are going to be in the next institution that you create. Kent County's not born that way or built that way. At least my 64 years haven't been. We play with everybody because they're a neighbor, they're a friend. And when you start degrading it by publicly putting it up there that whether your ethnic background fits the schedule, that's ridiculous. In our county, you want to create problems that's the best way to do it. Sorry, I didn't mean to get upset, but it's truly, it's got no place in what we're doing unless it's mandated by the state, which I don't think it is. I don't think we need to read quotas if I'm not mistaken. So I'd really like you folks to take a real long look and take some time to make a decision. Uh, the young ladies back here, obviously they're old, they're young enough to not remember when 
Ken Downey had three high schools, and from seventh grade to twelfth grade, we all went to school together, and I, I, I failed to find too many folks that turned out too bad from back in the days when there was Mr. Ronnie, there was good old Rock Hall High School, and Galena High School, Chestertown High School, and from seventh grade to twelve, doesn't Mark Della still have a uh, junior senior high school? Aren't they all in one building? Aren't they one institution? Uh, uh, they're, they exist today, you know, and they seem to get along fine, and I don't think there's too many folks down there that seventh graders are being abducted by 12th graders, and I think there's a lot of misconception there, but uh, you've got a middle school, and folks, I know you don't hear this, but it's true, you got a middle school, you got a high school that's less than half full, you got a middle school that's less than half full, we'll put them together, sell that to Washington College, they'd love to have it, it would kill your budget, it'd be a wonderful thing, but was that ever discussed? Was that even considered? I know folks are going to get coached, we understand that, as we are, to your proposal now, but we want to hear more about it. You came in and said, this is what's happening, it's a done deal, or you're concerned. These folks need to make a decision, and I don't think it's been... I don't think it's been digested particularly well by the community, as well as the folks sitting up there. So I, as a grandfather, as a, a business person, that have, my entire life has been in Kent County, I truly ask each and every one of you to take your time in this decision-making process. Look at every possible uh, opportunity <laughs> that we can take to better the educational opportunities for the children and not be detrimental to any of the communities that they serve. Because they're the lifeblood of each community that they're in. They truly are. And thank you very much for that. I don't know that I can make a decision on January 25th, to tell you the truth. Um, there are so many unknowns. I, I heard concerns today from some parents of eighth graders that I hadn't considered, you know, a month ago because I, I still think there are a lot of positives of moving the eighth grade into the high school. Um, I think that one of the biggest factors, second to the whether we're providing the proper academic environment for our kids, is the transportation. And even if I was ready to make a decision January 25th on everything else, I haven't been in any way given enough information about transportation. I cannot make a decision not knowing how much it's going to cost us down the road. I don't keep my personal checkbook that way, and I'm certainly not going to play with the house money the same way. I don't want to approve something in January 25th and then find out in the middle of March or April that we're going to have to, that we're going to expend a couple hundred thousand dollars in transportation. Um, in addition, the, what what really, if I understand it correctly, is driving us is it, and I hate to think it's a decision driven by money, but that's really the case. I mean, like I said, I'm not ready to make a decision on January 25th, but at the same time, I also know we can't continue to absorb an $800,000 loss every year. We, we just can't do that. So I'm between a rock and a hard place, and I'm just, I don't want to blindside you on January 25th, but I'm telling you now, Dr. Couch, I'm just, I'm just not there. And I think maybe Dr. Taft can explain the, the necessity that the consolidation has to happen because that is mandated by the state that you have certain dates that you have to get done and you can't consolidate after a certain date and in 2016 you have to wait till the following year. So that's why it seems like it's, it's a little faster than, and maybe the, I wasn't a part of the last consolidation, but maybe it seems faster this time, but I don't know. But, Anytime you close a school, you're going to affect somebody. You're going to affect a lot of people. And it's not something that any of us want to do. We are suffering economically. And, but unless I'm misled, I don't think that anybody that's sitting up here tonight has made a decision. All we've had is proposals. Have we had every possible proposal? Obviously not. And to me, the biggest problem still remains transportation because we're going to decide what the transportation is after we make a decision on what schools we're going to close. Well, if we say, I'm just throwing a number, if we say a million dollars because we close one school, two schools, however many, but it's all set by, it costs us a, 
a million dollars for the additional transportation costs, then we're right back where we started before we did a consolidation. And it's, and I'm not saying it's an easy thing to, to, that can be described, but we're pretty much going to have to be put in a position where we're going to form a budget for next year and we're going to have to start at ground zero with the amount of students that we have this year, whatever that number is, 2,000, which is it's less than that, I think. And the problem is that every year we go by the, the enrollment that we had the previous year and that's what we base our budget on and then lo and behold, Next year comes around, we lose 40, 50, 60 kids, and we're already, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the hole before the season, before the school year starts, or as the school year starts. So that's just the way the system works. I, I don't agree with it. I don't think we're treated fairly by the state, like Mr. Eddy says. I don't think we have a whole lot of clout when we go to Annapolis, to be quite honest. But you can go over there and complain. But it seems like all the school, smaller school districts suffer the same way. So, you know, I'm just speaking for myself. It's not a dumb deal, this proposal to me. And, you know, I'm like Trish. I gotta have more information to, 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 to be able to vote on the 25th. I know that's the date that we've picked, but I think that we have to make some kind of decision. And I, I guess it, I think it has to be April, maybe, sometime in April. And, but there, there certainly needs to be more discussion than just to say on the 25th, these are our two options. We're going to close these two schools and move on from there. And until we get some transportation numbers, I can't vote for the consolidation in any way, shape, or form. Not that I don't have faith in Dr. Couch. I do. Best superintendent. But I've never had the pleasure of working with him. I've had three or four. But the facts remain transportation costs are significant. And Got to have some, some numbers before me personally can vote on what I, could, what I can do in the consolidation. Um, I, I honestly hope the board, Dr. Couch, takes Mr. Carrick's uh, idea because sitting here, I know I was at a bad angle and I've looked at these maps before, and this is no disrespect, but if one of the maps I believe better thing, students are going to rock off, and if that is the case, I would become a bus contractor because. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, I don't know, and I know it's not easy. I know we're using some kind of formula now because I've, I've been bringing this question up about transportation for years because ever since I've been on the board, I was the only board member that went through the last consolidation, which was disastrous. And I had a, a beef about the transportation because I actually voted against the, tra uh, the consolidation. It was guaranteed to me after the first year by the previous superintendent that the staff would look at it because of course we've got kinks to work out. The kinks were never worked out. We never sat down at the table again. The boundary state, I'm gonna say it again, we had Chestertown kids and Washington Park and Coventry Farm going to Wharton and Wharton kids going to Galena. That to me is just ridiculous. And I like Miss Elgin's, uh, thanks for bringing that up because when you put, I wanna see miles from a school because if you're three and a half, four miles from a school and then 17 miles another way, I know the boundaries are different, but we gotta, to me, there's gotta be a, I don't understand why the, the, the transportation has been such a cluster. The whole, the, every year it's something going on with it. It's no disrespect for who's in the office, but we were using some kind of, Margaret Ellen showed me this map thing where she, when I was questioning before and she had lines all over the, I left there with my head spinning. So apparently we're using something now, but, and now we're gonna bring in another consultant to, to show us how we can make the uh, routes more efficient. I have problems with the transportation, the zones. Um, I like, why, why is there, uh, like, like Gary said, and Mr. Tolliver said, why is there things about what color the students are in the school? I, I look at a student as a student. And, I, you know, I grew up playing Little League Baseball. Half our team was, uh, we called them colored then, black boys and other half were white boys. So I don't see what the problem is. Uh, I grew up with them, I played sports with them, and all of a sudden everything's gotta be color coordinated, and I, I just don't get that part of it. And another thing is, I know there is some small school districts because 
I think Mardella is one, Bow Manor's one, and St. Michael's is one where they have uh, seventh or eighth grade uh, students in their high schools or in a complex next to it. Um, I brought up at the one board meeting the direction of the county. Uh, Mr. Short went there, Mr. Fithian went there, and Mr. Kaufman said, well, we talked with the county because this complex was built in the late 60s, Wharton Elementary and High School, and even though Mr. Pack was here for just a short period of time, his vision, when I first got on the board, was someday bring in the middle school to the Wharton complex and probably close in Wharton Elementary and have a middle school, high school complex with the community center and the parks. And about that same time, there was four developments in the area, four farms that were going to go in, one straight across from the high school on the uh, edge of Smithville Road, one on the end of Portage Grove Road, one next to Elgin's uh, farm, next to the trailer park, and one right across from the community center, um, which is Mike Williams' farm. There's four developments that were going in when the economy went bad, uh, all of them went belly up. But my, my question was basically, and I haven't seen any of the commissioners or Jamie Williams say, is there anything in the books? Because those farms are back on the market. And I know there's no guarantee, because Mr. Coffin said, well, there's no guarantee if the houses were built, the children would come. But that's where, at the time, which was only 10 years ago, that's, that's where they were targeting bringing uh, single family homes back into Kent County and building a school complex here in Wharton. So it, it, it would be very difficult to me. I appreciate Mr. Robinson and Gary speaking for Millington because I'm here in Wharton, and I was in Wharton Elementary in kindergarten the first year it opened up. So there's some uh, feelings there for me too, and it's a tough decision. And bottom line, I just need some more numbers. Um, I know Dr. Couch has worked diligently to uh, give us these numbers. I think um, we just need to talk some more about it. And I'd like to have just a more clear graph of the boundaries, because the bus routes. Because like you say, we want to watch, be careful of the bus routes, but we also we don't want kids on the bus for an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. Um, there is a lot to consider here. And believe me, I hope when we leave this meeting tonight, you'll take back, because there really is, I've heard a lot in the community that we all have made a decision already. And I think you guys can contest tonight that we have not made a decision. So that perception is not true out there that some of you are here. There was a lot of questions. I, I, I like Mr. Williams, Ms. McGee, the transportation issue, I would really like to know that first. Um, it's always, for me, it's what's in the best interest of the kid. I work in a school system. I see the benefits of larger schools. And when I say larger schools, I don't mean bigger class sizes. But I'm talking about schools where you can have a couple different teachers, not one teacher that teaches this subject, a teacher that teaches that subject. It's hard when you go to start teaming, because believe me, there are some teachers and teachers will learn from one another. They will pick up things and that does nothing but benefit kids. So again, my decision is always gonna come back and that includes transportation. I don't wanna see kids on buses for long periods of time either. You know, believe me, I see bus drivers every morning. That's one job I will never have in my life as a bus driver. I don't know how they do it. I give them a whole lot of credit. When you got your back turned to 30, 40, 50 kids on a bus, whoo, that takes a lot. And then they got to focus on the road. So if we can try to keep them, their transportation less than more, that's a benefit too to the kids. So we got good quality teachers out there, okay? And we want to keep good quality teachers because I still have children in the school, I have a child in the school system. I want him to have the very best, nothing less. And that's the same for you. I look at him, I look at you. I want you, your child, to have the very best also. So there's a lot, a lot to take into consideration. I'm not sure either. January 25th, I'll be able to make that decision either.